Let's get back to solving equations. We were using the addition property of equality. We're going to continue using that. Then we're going to add another property of equality here in just a moment. So let's take this equation. 3x plus 19 minus 2x equals 14. Now, what do you think you would like to do first? X mi uh, minus 2x. So Elena's saying I can combine like combine. terms, right? Now, all of this stuff is here on one side, so it's just like the problems that we did last time. Well, if I have just this expression, we can combine. We've got 3x and a negative 2x. This is where you have to be able to see it. Don't See, the book will do crazy things like, oh, turn the minus into a plus, so it's plus the negative 2x. I hate that. You've got to be able to see that this is a positive 3x, this is a negative 2x, so combine that to get what? That's just a plain positive 1x, right? Now, the 19 is still a positive 19, right? Don't change your signs. Sometimes you guys on the test were changing positives to negatives and vice versa. You weren't carrying numbers down. Some of you completely cut off the last number, like the number was 128, and you wrote down 12. Oh, why aren't you laughing at that one today? Now what would you do to get x by itself? Because remember, to solve means to isolate, to get the variable by itself. What do I do? Subtract 19 from 14. I'm going to subtract 19 on both sides. I said we're going to go pink today, right? That's the kind of mood I'm in. So subtract 19 on the left, subtract 19 on the right. That's using the addition property of equality. Even though we are subtracting, it's as though you're adding a negative 19 on both sides. So make sure that this does reduce to give you zero. That's what's supposed to happen. We're undoing what's being done to the x. So now we have just plain x equals what? Negative 5. Equals negative 5. You are combining two numbers with opposite signs. So you have to subtract these guys. And you keep the sign of the larger number in terms of the absolute value. So the difference between 19 and 14 is 5. The negative number is the larger one, so that's why it's negative 5. Now this is just one of many ways to show the work here for this problem. As long as everything you do here is valid, there are different ways of working this out. Let me go back here to where I have the x plus 19 equals 14. By using the addition property, that said that I can add or subtract the same thing on both sides. Now when you do that, you can only do it once. So if I subtract 14 once on the left, I subtract it once. Why am I just subtracting 14? Why did you guys say that? That's all your fault. If I subtract 19 once on the left, I subtract it once on the right, just like that. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. So I'm doing the same thing on both sides of the equation. And on the left side, what's positive 19 minus 19? These guys are additive inverses. It gives us the additive identity of 0. So I just have x. And then on the right side, I have negative 5. Do you all agree? It's still the same thing, right? Now, another way to show this work, very similar to what we have here, is the following. Now, you guys agree that I need to subtract the 19 to the other side, right? Yep. Now, I can show the work like I have here, where I'm actually showing the minus 19, or you can kind of do this in your head and go, you know what? I know that I need to subtract 19, and when I do, it's going to cancel with that, right? But I still want to show the work, so I'm going to show that I've got the minus 19 on the right side like that. So what you can kind of think of is that once, you, once it goes to the other side, you would have the opposite when you're moving that whole term. Are you with me on that? When you move that whole term, it's just like I subtracted 19 on both sides before. So I've got the minus 19 over here. And the reason I didn't do it like I did in the last way of showing you is because I know that when I subtract 19, it's going to give me a 0. So I'm not writing that. But you see, you still get the same answer of negative 5.
What do you guys think? Now, some people say it's the better way. Yeah. It's all it's all what you know, what you're comfortable doing, right? Like I was just watching somebody in the parking lot spend five minutes to back into a parking spot. <laughs> when, had they just pulled in, then they just have to back out one time whenever they leave, they could save themselves a lot of time. Oh, I'm sorry, Cheryl, was that you? you was that you? Oh, okay, no, no. No, this, this was, this was a, do, do the kills, is it, is it hoopty? Hoopty, is, is that still used? Yeah. I remember when I had it hoopty. I was rolling through H-Town in my 15s. <laughs> Some of you are laughing because you know what that's like. Tim, come on, you know what that's like, right? You hit a pothole, man, now I gotta get a new hubcap. Life was tough back in the day. <laughs> now, if I've got this, if I do it the way where I, I like this last method that I showed you, what am I going to do to get rid of the 23? I'm going to do 47 plus 23. So the step that I'm doing is I'm adding 23 to move it over, right? Mm -hmm. So when I do that, I still have my negative 47 over here. What I have now is that's a plus 23. And then what you have on the right side is just an exercise in arithmetic with those, those signs. These guys have opposite signs. One's negative and one's positive. What's the larger number? The negative is larger, so I'm going to keep that sign. And the difference between 47 and 23 is what? It's 24. Now, do we have to do it that way? No, no, you could go back to what we had done before. And really, it's just a, it's just personal preference. I think a lot of us may be used to doing it this way where we add 23 underneath. Because we're more used to doing that in a column format. And if you do that, you still get negative 24. There's nothing new under the sun. Questions about that?